Well, we hope everyone had a great Earth Day this weekend, and we're still talking about the health of our planet and the massive role that bees play. So joining us now is Mike Rosso with Free Range Beehives. Thank you so much for being here with us. Thanks for having me. Absolutely. It's wonderful to be here. Absolutely. So first things first, tell us about what you're wearing. Sure. So. <laughs> It's true that honeybees are quite docile, but as a beekeeper, I have to go into the hive every once in a while, mm -hmm. and it's natural that they might get a little bit defensive when I'm opening up their right. home. So I have to wear safety gear. This is too thick for the bees to sting through. And then I put my veil on over my head so that they can't get to my head at all. And Really, at the end of the day, it makes me calmer, and right. I think it makes the bees calmer. Absolutely, you want that layer of protection, right? Exactly. Absolutely. So there is a new bill actually being introduced about limiting pesticides too, with yes. regards to bees. Can you talk about that? As yes, well? it's called the Pesticide Applicators Act. It's been in place for a long time, but this is the first time it's been reviewed in 12 years. And one of the major issues that's under consideration is the use of a type of chemical called a neonicotinoid, okay. or neonix for yes, short. Right. And they, they are seed treatments so that when the seed sprouts, the plant automatically has the pesticides inside of it. And it can be quite damaging to yeah. a, a large variety of pollinators. Yeah, and speaking of the bee population is declining, right? Are they endangered and um, why is this happening? Talk yes, they're not on the endangered species okay. list, but we lose over 40% of our managed beehives every year here in Colorado. Mm -hmm. There are three major reasons. One is that insecticide problem that we talked about. Mm -hmm. The second one is lack of habitat or loss of habitat due to human expansion. Every time we expand a new city or a new town, we pave over some of the fields where right. their forage exists. And then the third thing is diseases and pathogens that have, that have cropped up over the past 20 years or so. And we know that you are so passionate about this. We can feel your passion. Uh, bees are so important to our environment, too. What can we do to help out? It, it, there are, again, a few things that folks can do at home. The first thing is do think about the types of chemicals you're using in your yard. Um, there are alternatives. Uh, white vinegar works very well on weeds. Okay. Um, soapy water works for insect infestations if you get aphids or those Japanese beetles. Okay. And the third thing is um, that you can find organic solutions at the store. There are choices for safer alternatives for you know your yard at home. Uh, the second thing you can do is plant pollinator friendly plants in your garden. If you go to plant some things this year, uh, they're beautiful, they do very well in our climate. There's a great list of those on our website at freerangebeehives.com. And the, um, the third thing that, that you can do is uh, just make sure that your you know, building a good habitat for, mm. for bees in your backyard. Lots yeah. of flowering plants and uh, things like that. I was going to ask you, yeah, what are ways that we can be friendly with bees? I think there's a misconception that they're all going to sting you or that they're kind of, you know, hostile. Um, what can people, what should people know about that? Too? Yeah, they, they are not hostile. Okay. Um, what really I think people get confused with is uh, wasps and hornets. Okay. Yellow jackets okay. being the famous ones. Yes. Those are the aggressive ones. They are meat eaters. They're not, you know, pollen and, and nectar gatherers like honeybees are. So those uh, yellow jackets are much more aggressive and often mistaken for, for honeybees. Gotcha. Thank you so much for your expertise. We appreciate it. Thank you very much. Great job. And you can watch all of our interviews on our website, cbscolorado.com. We'll be right back.